All right, so today I'm going to show you one of my favorite integrals of all time. And it's my favorite, one of my favorite integrals, not because it's really difficult or really impressive or because it uses some crazy complicated technique that you don't learn in a calculus class. It's one of my favorites just because the solution is really cute. And it uses a very simple idea that you don't really see that often in a calculus class. So, what's the deal? Like I said, no complicated technique like integration by parts or anything like that. All this requires is a simple substitution. The very first thing that you learn to do anytime you take calculus. Okay, so I claim that we're going to make a substitution. What kind of substitution is that going to be? Well, what's different about this integral is that think about typically how substitutions work or what they're designed for. Usually a U substitution is built to deal with ugly compositions of functions. That was the main motivation. They were designed to simplify complicated expressions of compositions of functions. We don't really have anything like that here. If there's any sort of obvious substitution you might be tempted to make, maybe you want to call u the denominator or something. And you can try, but it's not really going to work that well. Um, just because of both of these terms, you'll pick up a weird differential on top. So rather than make a substitution motivated by composition of functions, we're going to make a substitution motivated by symmetry. Invoking symmetry is the key to this integral. So let's get started. Here's the substitution. I'm going to let u be pi over 2 minus x. And like I said, if you haven't seen this kind of thing before, it might seem a little weird because I'm not making a substitution motivated by the integrand. It feels more motivated by the actual bounds of the definite integral. So it seems a little weird, but let's try it. Kick it into action, see what we get. As always, when you do a substitution, you need to change everything in the integral. That includes the thing you're integrating. It includes the differential. And whether you like it or not, it includes the bounds. We have to change everything. So du, take the derivative here. Pi over 2 is constant, so we just get negative dx. That's how we can rewrite the differential. And then we need to figure out how the bounds change. So when x is 0, what is u? Well, u is going to be pi over 2 minus 0, which is pi over 2. Likewise, at the upper bound, when x is pi over 2, what is u? Pi over 2 minus pi over 2 is 0. OK. <clears throat> well, let's take this information, see if we can transform the integral. So the integral that we start with, how does this transform? The bounds, like we talked about, go from now pi over 2 to 0. dx is negative du, if you were to multiply both sides here by negative 1. So that negative I can bring out front, and then I'll get a du. And then the last thing we need to do is figure out how to rewrite the integrand in terms of u. As always, we go back to the original substitution. And here's the idea. The fact that u equals pi over 2 minus x, just solve for x. Move the x over to the left, subtract the u over to the right. And this substitution says that x is pi over 2 minus u. This is what we can plug into the integrand to change everything. So if I do that, stick in pi over 2 minus u for x, upstairs I'll get a sine of pi over 2 minus u. And 
I'll give myself some more room. In the denominator, I'll get sine of pi over 2 minus u plus cosine of pi over 2 minus u du. Okay. And we've officially transformed the integral to be entirely in terms of u. And you're thinking, Joe, this looks way worse than what we just started with. What are you doing? I agree. But we can use one of the most basic trig identities that we know to rewrite this. In particular, here's the key. Think back way, way, way back to high school or whatever when you learned about trig functions. Sine and cosine are almost the same thing. They're just shifted. If you think about the graphs, they look exactly the same up to a shift. And the relevant fact was that sine of pi over 2 minus theta, this is cosine. They're the same thing. And likewise, cosine of pi over 2 minus theta is sine of theta. So these expressions here, we can actually just turn back into more normal looking expressions via these identities. So let's do that. Ah, the other thing that we can do here, it's a little awkward to have the pi over 2 below and the 0 above. Fortunately, we picked up a negative sign when we did the uh, substitution, so I can use this negative sign to flip-flop the order. So this is the same thing as 0 to pi over 2 of, by this shift identity, the numerator is cosine of u. Likewise, the denominator is cosine of u plus sine of u. Okay, now you're thinking it looks a little simpler, but it looks pretty much identical to the thing that we started with, except there's a cosine in the numerator. Did we accomplish anything? So far, not yet, but this is going to be useful because there's one more tricky step that we can do. And actually, let me do this to make it explicit. I'm going to give the original integral that we're working with a name. Let me call this i. i is the thing that we're trying to find out. And if I summarize what we've shown so far, <clears throat> we've shown that i is this thing. Now, one other thing I'm going to do, anytime we integrate, this is a dummy variable, right? It doesn't mean anything. I could have chosen u, I could have chosen t, I could have chosen smiley face, I could choose anything I want. So in particular, I can just re-choose a different dummy variable. And I'm going to choose x again. So the next little confusing thing that I might do is I'm going to show, or I'm going to take this expression and just go back to x. This is exactly this, because x and u are just dummy variables. u is dummy variable. So I just switched back to x. OK, what's the point? Here's what we can do. This is where it gets cute. On the one hand, i equals that in the box. That's the original integral we started with. But on the other hand, i equals this. That's what we showed by the substitution. What if I add these together?
i plus i is, well, i is this. But i is also this. So I could write i plus i as this integral plus that integral. Now, common denominator here, so I can, well, I can put them both under the integral sign and then add the fractions together. And this turns into 0 to pi over 2 of common denominator is sine of x plus cosine of x. And then in the numerator, we would have sine of x plus cosine of x. Ooh. That's 1. That's what's so cute about this integral. This is now very easy to evaluate. Integrating 1 from 0 to pi over 2 just gives you the length of the interval of 0 to pi over 2, which is pi over 2. Now, pi over 2 is not the answer, because what does this thing equal? Follow the equalities back. It equals i plus i, which is not what we were trying to find. We were just trying to find i. But let me rephrase what we've shown. In conclusion, i plus i is pi over 2. But i plus i is just 2i. So 2 times i is pi over 2. Solve for i, and we're done. This integral is pi over 4. Pretty nice.